Hello LEGO fans and creators, welcome back to Boon Builds for my tutorial on BrickLink Studio. BrickLink Studio is a digital building platform. It's like a 3D CAD for building LEGO on your computer. Of all the digital LEGO building platforms available, BrickLink Studio is certainly my favorite. I've been using it since it first came out, and in this series of tutorials, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of it. This video is intended to be the very first tutorial in my series. So this video is for people who are new to Studio, whether you are brand new to virtual 3D digital LEGO building, or if you are migrating to Studio from another platform like LDD. In this video, I'll show you how to download and install Studio. I'll also give you an overview of all the tools and the menus and the features that you need to know about to get diving into building digitally in BrickLink Studio. If you're already using Studio and you're looking for tutorials on more specific topics or advanced techniques, please check out the links in the description of this video and watch the tutorials in my BrickLink Studio tutorial playlist. All right, now let's dive in and download the software. You can start by visiting BrickLink.com. In the top menu, there is a button that says Studio. Hover there and click on Download. That will take you to the download page. You can learn a lot about Studio from this page. We'll start by clicking this Download Studio 2.0 for Windows. After the file has downloaded, you can launch the installer and select the desirable settings for your operating system. The installer may ask for you to restart your computer, which you can do at this time. Every time you open Studio, you will see this launch window right in the center of your screen. I see three of my models here because I've viewed them recently. There are a number of other items we can get into in future tutorials on this screen, but first we're just going to click Create New and dive into building. Let's talk a little bit about the mouse controls. Using your right mouse button to click and drag allows you to look at the 3D space from different angles. Using the scroll wheel zooms in and out, and your left click allows you to select and place elements. All right, so let's just dive right in and place something. We'll pull this one by one brick here. After placing that brick, it immediately gives me a second one. I can choose to place that or I can press escape or delete on my keyboard to release it. Now I'll select a one by two brick and rotate it using the arrow keys on my keyboard. You can see left and right turn it side to side in either direction. Up and down arrow keys turn it to the back or to the front in case you wanted a sideways brick. Using the arrow keys on your keyboard you can turn your pieces in pretty much any direction in increments of 90 degrees. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the parts palette on the left hand side of your screen. The very top shows which set of parts you're using. I typically use the master parts list. There are some other reasons you might wanna use different parts palettes. We'll get to that in future tutorials. Directly beneath there, you have some categories. You can scroll through these categories and let's say we want to select something in the cylinder category. Click there and we'll see all of the available cylinder pieces. Directly beneath the categories list is the search bar. I tend to use the search bar much more often than the category list. I'll show you a little bit about that in a moment. But the category list can be really helpful if you're looking for something and you can picture it in your head but you don't know what it's called. You might be able to find it by looking at some of the clues in the category list. All right. Down here in the search bar, let's say I wanted a 2x6 brick. I can just start typing 2x6 and it's going to start pointing me in the right direction. Now I can place my 2x6 brick in the building area. Directly to the right of the search bar, we have color options. You can select a color if you want to start searching by color. You're going to see the parts in those colors. You can even check this hide unavailable colors. So if I want to build in blue, I've searched two by six, it's going to give me every part that has ever existed in that color. Of course, if I uncheck hide unavailable colors, it's going to take a moment, take a look at the database, and then it's going to show me all of the applicable parts in that color, whether they existed in that color or not. That can be helpful if you want to build something that you can actually go get the parts for, right? Okay. Next to that, we've got a button that toggles on and off printed bricks. So here you see in my search criteria, all of the printed bricks that are available. 
I don't tend to build with that function on very often unless I know that there's a specific printed brick that I want to look for and include in my creation. The icon on the right changes the size of your parts previews and the parts palette. This might be helpful if you're looking through a lot of parts or if you want to make them a little bit bigger and easier to see. Across the screen on the right side, we have a color palette. This dropdown shows you all of the available colors. I'm going to select this two by six brick and in the color palette dropdown with hide unavailable colors selected, you can see we are only getting the colors that this element is available in. The dollar signs on the right hand give you a relative idea of how much that part costs in that color as related to the price of that part in other colors. If I uncheck hide unavailable colors, now I can choose from all the Lego colors whether that part has been produced in that color or not. And if I stumble across one that that part has never been produced in, you'll see below the color palette a parts list that will show a little yellow exclamation point if that part has never been produced in that color. I can hover over the exclamation point and it shows me what the problem is. It says color unavailable. All right, I'll switch that back to yellow. In content colors, we can see the colors that exist in the creation. You can easily click on one of those existing colors and turn the brick back to that color. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here and by clicking and dragging across the screen, I can select as many bricks as I want to. Now, so far I have been using just the basic select tool. You can see that at the top left of your screen here. You can also use the select tool at any time by clicking V. If you click on the little arrow by the select tool, you get some other options. I'll get into that in other tutorials, but for right now, we can just use this default select tool. I'd say the next most commonly used tool from the toolbar is the clone tool. You can see it's the third one on the list here. You can also select the clone tool at any time by clicking C on your keyboard. With the clone tool active, when you click on a brick, it automatically clones that brick and lets you place it somewhere else. This will keep cloning and cloning until you press escape or delete on your keyboard. Now I'm gonna delete just a couple of these away and we'll see a little bit of action here. When I bring this toward another brick, it starts giving me options of where to place that brick. That's because the snap tool is selected in the toolbar. If I unclick snap, you can see it just sort of floats around out there. There are times when you might want to have snap off, but I almost always build with snap on. Makes it pretty easy to put things in just the way they would go in real life. Another tool that you might use fairly frequently is hinge. I'm gonna click these together by just one stud. This wouldn't really work in the real world, but it'll give us a good example for using the hinge tool. The hinge tool is the second tool on the toolbar. You can click there or press H on your keyboard at any time to activate the hinge tool. With the hinge tool, I can click on this brick and it gives me, there's just one point of articulation between these two bricks. And now you see I can select that and start to turn that brick on that stud. The hinge tool works with anything that can be hinged. I'm gonna go ahead and search for hinge in the search bar and uh, let's see, maybe I will bring over one of these types of hinge bricks and one of these rotating and it will snap to the other hinge there. Now when I select the hinge tool, I can click on the brick that I want to hinge and move it into position. Now let's say I'm building and I decide I want to get rid of a handful of the elements that I've placed. I can press control on my keyboard and click to select multiple items and delete those items or I can move those items around as a unit. I just noticed over here in the parts list, I've got a couple of exclamation points, which means that these hinge bricks do not come in blue. So I can click on this brick come up here, click hide unavailable colors, and you'll see I can select dark bluish gray for that one. Click on the other hinge, and we've got a few more options. I'll change that one to tan. And now you see we've eliminated all of the errors in our parts list. 
Now I'm going to hit Control A on my keyboard or Command A to select all of the items, pressing Delete to get rid of it. I'm going to build a little model of a brick and I'll just talk to you about what I'm doing as I go. I think I want this brick to be mostly yellow, so I'm going to go to the Parts Palette Color Selector, click on the Yellow Family and go down to Yellow. And I do want to go ahead and hide unavailable colors so that I'm not building with any parts that don't actually exist. So this is going to be a large scale 2x2 two two brick. So I'm going to start with, let's say, like a 6x6 six six plate. And you can see that came up there pretty quickly. But if I wanted to filter this even further, I can start typing plate. And you see there I get plate. Good. And if I wanted a round plate, I could type round, and it's just going to keep filtering for the more keywords that I give it there. Okay, but this 6x6 six six plate is the one I want. Let's go like this. Now, I want this to be like a little box, so I'm going to build with some bricks around, and I'll do a 1x4 here and here and a one by six. And again, the default feature when pulling an item out of the parts palette is that once you place it, you essentially have the clone tool and you get to place that item as many times as you want until you press escape or delete. Sometimes you might find that it's difficult to place the brick exactly where you want it depending on the view so even with a part in your selection, you can right click and drag to change the view of your model and then you can get your parts placed. All right, now I'm going to add another layer of this, but I wanna overlap my seams. So I'm going to click on these four and I can press C, which is the clone tool. It's gonna to clone all four of those and I'm going to press the left arrow to rotate that 90 degrees. Now I can set that layer on top of that layer. Now I wanna cap these walls off with some tile. So I'll type tile into my search. Let's see, I'll go ahead and place one by sixes across. And I think next I want one of those one by four plates that has a stud at each end. Let's see, there they are right there. Put one right here and one right there. Just a few studs for the lid of this box to sit on. Then I'll select the bottom plate, click C on my keyboard. That's the clone tool. Stick that to the top. Now I want mostly to tile this out up top. So we'll go back to tiles. And we'll do a one by six, one by six. And how about a one by four? And then maybe I'll take these two by two L-shaped tiles, put them here. Now I just want four studs on there that I can build up the larger scale studs. I'll do plate, and the very first plate should be one by one. Pretty much all of these parts in the parts palette in these categories increase by size. So you're going to start, generally speaking, with the smallest items at the top of the list. Scroll down to find the larger items. So I'm going to stud in there. Now I want some round plates, so we'll do round plate. That will get me this far. I can look at this piece. Is that the one that has, yep, it's got an anti-stud right in the center of the bottom. So I'm gonna place this on top of those studs. Then I can do round tile. And now I have built a scale replica of a two by two brick. Let's say I had built many of these and I want to zoom in and look at one. I can press my scroll button, the center button on the mouse and click and drag 
and that allows me to pan the view of the build without rotating it around. So the right click rotates, that center scroll button when you click lets you pan back and forth. Scrolling the scroller lets you zoom in and out. So I'll pan into one of these. And when I rotate, you can see I'm rotating around this brick. And if I pan over to this brick, you see it. the rotation seems to be a little wonky. That means my origin is still over there on that left brick. And I want to place it here. I can click on this piece, right click, and click set as origin. And now when I rotate, I get a little bit more control over rotating around what I really want to focus on. Right clicking on any piece gives you some other options. And we'll get into some more of these in other tutorials. But with this part selected, we also see some other information down here at the bottom. The one I want to focus on right now is price. This gives you an estimate of the price for that element. There are a lot of factors that go into that and we can discuss that in further detail in the future. But that just gives you a basic idea. This says this six by six plate in yellow is gonna be $1.28 on Bricklink. I might change it to a different color and let's see blue. You can see blue is only 20 cents in the United States dollars. Most of the time when I'm building digitally, I know I want to order these parts to build it in real life. So I tend to watch the price of my pieces as I lay them. Sometimes an expensive part might cause me to change the color or rethink whether there's another part that I can use. Another way that you can change the view of your model besides using your mouse is in this camera view. Here on the far left, we have perspective that basically gives you a perspective view of the model, something similar to what you would expect to see in real life. On the far right, we've got orthographic. That means there's no perspective on the model. You're seeing this very linear mathematical view of a three-dimensional object. By clicking any of the icons in the middle, you see the front, the back, the right side, the left side, you can see the model from the bottom, you can see the model from the top. These views can help in a lot of different scenarios if you want to make sure things are in just the right place. Now the last studio feature I want to discuss in this video is collision. You can see the collision icon in the center of your toolbar at the top of the screen. I have had collision enabled throughout this tutorial which does not allow two items to be placed in conflicting space. If I turn this function off, I now have the ability to make items collide in a way that they wouldn't in real life. Let me show you. So if I click C on my keyboard for the clone tool, I'm gonna clone one of these two by six bricks and I can start to find places to put it where it will think there's a stud there. It's connecting to the studs on that bottom plate. And if I click it, it is now existing in space that can't really be shared in real life with this one by four that goes across. There are some very unique situations where you might want to be able to make items collide for the most part, I build with the collision function enabled because I don't want to build something digitally that I can't build in the real world. There are a few exceptions, but we'll talk about those in a future tutorial. This is it for my introductory tutorial for Bricklink Studio. If you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button. If you have any specific questions about Studio or any topics you'd like to see in a future tutorial, please put those ideas in the comments section below this video and I'll be happy to get to them as soon as possible. If you want to see more like these, please subscribe to Boone Builds and hit that bell icon so you get notified when I publish videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lot of fun with Bricklink Studio. And until next time, go build something amazing.